Hey, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Ask Elite Leap Mindset. Got a new episode, got a special guest on, my boy Kyle Perry. And uh, before we get started, as always, subscribe, like, and comment. This should be another good episode. We're going to get dig deep. Hey, we got a special guest on my podcast, my boy Kyle Perry. Perry What's Star up, House brother? Fitness. What's up, homie? Not much, man. How you been? Good, 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 man. Finally got you on here. I know. It's been a while. I yeah. think you were probably one of my favorite lives, and we just randomly met on a comment section one day. Yes, yes. You know what's crazy is I always say, like, the universe just has a weird way of pulling all, all of us together. It's true. So how are you doing? How's everything over there? Good, man. I'm just grinding every day, showing up consistently. Most people yeah. probably would have gave up by now, but... Yeah. So... Let's get started. Let's get it cracking. My boy, Kyle Perry. So tell me a little bit about yourself, man, where you grew up. Tell me a little bit about your upbringing, schooling. I know you have a military background. So let's, let's My name's Kyle into Perry. That. I'm from uh, Mansfield, Ohio. It's like in between Cleveland and Columbus. It's a relatively smaller city, but the crime rate's pretty high because it has all the traffic in between the two bigger cities. So... My mom tried to like, keep me out of trouble because my brother was a five-time felon. So she tried to uh, like, isolate me. But yeah. the thing about isolation is it does the exact same thing as letting you have a bunch of freedom. Uh, once you turn about 16 and 17 years old, you're about sick of getting isolated. So I started yeah. living a pretty crazy life. And uh, by the time I was almost 21, I decided I wanted to pretty much run away from my problems and go to the Marine Corps. And the thing is that I always tell people, I talk about this like almost every time I have the chance, is like when you take this with you, it doesn't matter what you do, the problems follow. And I got in just as much trouble going to the Marines as I was out here on the streets. And it's just because my mindset was still with me. I didn't internalize I was my biggest problem because you're your biggest problem and your best solution. And now that I finally figured that out, I finally got my life together. But I was always... I was always attracting, like, I'm real good at attracting energy now with real good energy. But back then, I always attracted negative energy. And I thought it was just life. And I thought everyone was bad. And it was because my intentions weren't there. The, my intentions weren't good. Yeah. So how, how was life in the military? How was it for you once you uh, escaped Ohio for a little while? It's stressful, man. Mm -hmm. You work like 16-hour days. You're away from your entire family. You're like creating new brotherhoods and stressful environment super that's why i relate to a lot of my mentors that are super aggressive because the military is aggressive so you, yes. you tend to take that on to you with the rest of your life and i didn't like it while i was in but now that i've been out for a while like i miss it because you don't see those type of people in the real world and when i was a corporate leader i just wished i could talk to the people like i did in the military because it actually gets your point across versus trying to play all these political games that everyone wants you to play in society nowadays yes is it, i i gotta tell you it's like I don't know what it is about this era, but everybody's soft. You can't talk to them like you really want to talk to them. They're so like, they get butthurt. They're little, little babies, little whiners. And the crazy, crazy thing is, man. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense, right? No, I tried to make someone work overtime one time, and they called an HR department on me and was like, can Kyle make me work overtime? And they were like, yeah, he's a plant manager. He can do whatever he wants. Like, they love to just like go behind your back and try to get you in trouble as soon as they don't like what's going on. And it's like a giant revolving door. That's all the corporate world is. Everything's like that nowadays. Like, they're just trying to get you fired from your job or canceled off social media because yep, it hurt yep. their feelings that you told them the truth. And it's just this big, giant cluster right now that's going on in life. Yeah, it's like... Uh... I feel like nobody wants adversity these days, like a little adversity and they're crying. They want to run to their mom. You hide in the corner. Like, what happened? What happened to you, man? You're supposed to be man. You talk tough. You act tough. You puff your chest out online. But when you get called out, you, you go back into your little shell and then you want to report or cancel. That's crazy. They try to cancel me at the same time one dude. Remember that? Yeah, it's nuts, dude. And when you see them in person, they're professional shoe starers. All of a sudden, their attitude's not there no more. Man, I always say that. Like, I wish to my wife that I wish I could meet some of these dudes in real life. Not to do nothing to them, but I just want to see what kind of man they are. I want to stare them in the eye, like give them the desk there. Like, I want to see what you're built like, homie. Like, if you They won't look at you. I used to have this troll from Ashland, and I saw him at the fair last year, and he literally looked down at the ground the whole time. When He acted like he didn't see me. Like, bro, I know you saw me. I, you've yeah. been talking on the internet for six months, and now all of a sudden it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. Where's that same energy? That's why we say, I hope, hopefully we don't run into each other. Keep that same energy when we do, though, because it's a different ball game. You're not behind a screen protected. You're not behind, yeah. you're not in your mommy's basement talking smack no more. Yeah. Or you don't have your 15 friends on social media to come and attack my page either. It's just all by you and you and your lonesome. 
Yeah, yeah, that's so true. So the military basically kind of broke you down, built you back up, but you still had that mindset from the streets following you into the military? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, like there was a point in time where I got in a decent amount of trouble, and I, I, there was, I never went to court, but pretty much we, like, kicked this dude's door in. There was a big fight, and then they were coming and telling me, like, I was facing, like, kidnapping charges, breaking and entering, holding people against Whoa. their will. And I start to Google, like, how much time I'm about to get in the brig, and it was, like, up to, like, 20-some years. And I'm like, dude, military prison is no joke. Oh. So that was, like, one of my first wake-up calls where I really started, like, getting back into the gym and stuff because the guy ultimately ended up saying I was never at his house, so it all just never even went to court. But, like, just to hear that you're facing all that in the military is, like, a super serious thing because you get punished twice. Like, you get punished out in town, and then you get punished on military base, and then you lose all your benefits that you worked for. So that's kind of when I stopped getting in trouble in the military. Like I had a couple close calls before that, but that was like my real big wake up call. It's funny that you say that because when I was incarcerated in federal prison, there was a dude in there, cool ass dude, man. Poor guy, I felt bad for him. He had to do a stint, federal prison, and then after he was done with the stint in federal prison, he had to go serve time in the Briggs military prison. And yep. the military prison is actually worse. They treat you guys worse. There's no commissary. I couldn't believe that. No way. And no you like march to chow and you have to make your beds perfect. Like it's literally the military, but in prison. So it's like prison on steroids. Yeah. We, we kind of had to do that in federal prison too. Not that bad. We're not the march to chow, nothing, yeah. but you had to, you know, your, your uniform had to be pressed tight. Your shoes had to be facing forward. They don't want no dirt under the bunks. Your floors better be polished. You're, you know, we had a certain crease on our bed. So they're kind of militant too. a lit lightweight, not as extreme as you guys, but yeah. that's where I kind of, I learned some things, how to fold towels a certain way. It's all military. It's a little bit militant. That makes too, sense because it's federal. So that mm -hmm. makes sense that it's more extreme than like a normal prison. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of guys are coming out of the military and getting a job with the uh, Bureau of Prisons. Yeah. It's really easy to get a job with them. You know, you got a military background. Go ahead. My brother was a correctional officer too for the uh, Bureau of Prisons in Dublin, California. Yep, I almost did the same thing because that's like most routes that most people take out of the military because it's good paying money and it's something to do until you find your real career. Because the yeah. thing about – the thing that sucks about transitioning out of the military is like you have all this experience. Like I did accounting in the Marine Corps, but I yeah. I had all the accounting experience, but I didn't have the degree like I went to school. So it's yeah. really hard to still find a job because a lot of places still want to see that paperwork even though you know how to do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about that life after the military. You got into the corporate world, you said, right? Yeah, it was a long road. This is why I always tell people, if you just take life serious, you can like you can do anything. When I first got out, I was making $11 an hour because I couldn't okay. find a job. Yeah. I went from $11 an hour to $45,000 a year. And that place that gave me the opportunity for $45,000 a year, I worked my way all the way up from that bottom position to the plant manager within three and a half years because I showed up every day before people and I left work yeah. every day after people. And I did that consecutively for two years straight and all the extra money I made, I took and got certifications. And then I took all those certifications and I applied for every job above the job I had until I made it all the way to plant manager. So within three and a half, four years of getting out of the military, I went from making $11 an hour to $100,000 a year. Wow. And then so I took that, that money and invested it into myself. Like, you know, I hired Wes to be my business coach. Yeah. And then I took all that knowledge that I learned with how to run a business that way. And I turned it into my own business by using Wes and the money I paid him to mentor me. And that's how I blew up on social media and stuff. I just used all my corporate world experience. Plus, I picked Wes's brain. But I had all that money to invest because I worked so hard in the corporate world. Yeah. So you uh, so basically the military, in a sense, helped you out, like get through the corporate world because you were grinding harder than everybody else. What do they say? 100%. Show through your actions. Yeah, 100%. The military is the thing that gave me that work ethic because I did not – I always felt like I could be something in life, but, like, I could never tap into it. And the military really helped me, like, get that edge above a lot of people. It's crazy. I, want, I always wonder what would my life be like if I joined the military because I was one signature away from joining the Marines too. And the funny thing is the recruiter was showing me all these pretty girls. Like, look, military men get pretty girls trying to sell me, like, hella hard. But I was still, like – Back then, I was still lightweight tied to the streets, gang culture, but I was like, man, I, I don't want to end up like my friends. I seen a lot of my friends going to jail and prison. I was like, I don't want to go down that road. I didn't go down that road. I got went down that road eventually as I got older, not as a, as a young man, but I was close too, man, going to the military. And I was like, I'm an extreme dude, so I know, I told myself, I'm going to go to the Marines. I'm going to try to be like a Marine Force recon, as bad as you can be. I, I always go for like the hardest shit. That's one thing about me. I don't know. You ever thought about that, like trying Honestly, to force recon like while you're in there? Uh, yeah, so my best friend got out of the Marine Corps, and he's Army Special Forces now, and I talk to him every day. He's, like, one of my best friends. And, like, we okay. have, like, 
he gets out this year and we have some big plans coming forward for content like nice. shooting ranges and like military nice. content that I'm going to start putting on my page. But the thing is like you might not have joined the Marines, but I mean you pretty much earned it the same way through prison because it's all like it's all militant state style based programming. Like yeah. they kind of take that especially in the federal world. They take that same kind of mindset and a lot of people yeah. that went from the military like you said into there. So it's really the same thing. Like you got the same experience, it's just you didn't have any like weekends or anything like I did, but pretty much like it's the exact same experience. It's very militant. It's very like cutthroat. And that's where you learned a lot of your discipline. Just like I did just different routes. But the crazy shit is, as I went into the, the, the year leading up to my incarceration, when I was fighting my case, it was very stressful. The scariest part about fighting a federal case is the unbeknown, unbeknown how many years they're going to slap you with. They were talking crazy years on me. Then it kept down, down, down. Then I thought I was going to go away for six years. And finally my lawyer got down to four so I relaxed a little bit, but that whole year, bro, I fucking went crazy and was eating like a fucking slob, like just reckless. Just gained a bunch of weight, just just didn't care. And I told myself, okay, I made a commitment to myself. I said, when I land in this place, I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going I'm to lock in, and I'm going to level myself up. So the first month was kind of figuring it out, how to eat, what to do. And then once I got the hang of it, started getting up at like 4.30, hitting the yard at 5, 5.15 when they opened up the head count, hitting cardio first thing in the morning really watching what I ate and this I locked in man it really it really taught me mindset I didn't know what I was that was mindset but I locked in on myself you know I was doing I was doing the time not letting it do me so I wanted to come out a better man from that experience that's why I like people that have been in prison that are fitness coaches because so many people in today's world are like well I don't have the money to eat right and I don't have the money to do this but if you can get jacked in prison dude you can get jacked anywhere it's like obviously the quality of food matters, but it's really the intensity you put into your lifestyle. Like if you can't yeah. afford something, you just have to put more intensity into the work at the workout itself to get the benefits. Like yeah, you might not see as best results if you had a chef or you had all this crazy food, but if you can get jacked in prison, you can literally get jacked anywhere. And and that's what people don't understand is what I try to tell people in, this, in today's era when I go to the gym. I see the intensity of people. It's so low frequency, and I'm young guys, half my age, and they're training with half effort, if not a quarter effort. They're not worried about to be on their phone. They're on their phones all day long. Like, they do a set on their phone, on the set of their phone. In prison, we're getting after, brother. We're in there. We got a lot of emotions. We miss home, some anger, some resentment. So you're in there. You're fucking lifting. You're jacked. You're, you're pushing. That intensity is a different level. So I tell people, the intensity of inmates is way harder than the intensity out here by far. Yeah, you don't have any distractions, and when you have all that pain and that like anger bottled up inside of you, that's the best way to release it. Like, yeah, if you ever notice the most jack people in the gym, they normally have a very dark past and they have some th yep. tra like traumas they're fighting through, and uh, they just go in the gym and they literally just relinquish hell onto the weights, and that's how yes. they got where they were at. They didn't take any science based approach, dude. They just went in there for an hour to two hours a day and just literally destroyed their body. Yep, that's it. That's what. That's what I, I did that in prison and. I, I don't destroy it now, but I still go hard with myself. I always say I'm going to war with myself because I got to beat the demons out of my mind every day. Every day is a new battle. Every day I wake up, I don't know how I'm going to feel that day. I can't predict it. All right, if I feel like I'm in a shitty mood or down, I'm going to switch that around. I'm going to go kill myself in the gym somewhat, you know? I'm the same way, dude. Like, sometimes I get so, like, hard on myself. I'm like, if I, I want to just go to the gym and die. Like, that's how hard I take it. And, like, like obviously you can't really kill yourself in the gym. So no, the only thing it's going to no. do is make you grow further. Like, you grow, you're just going to grow through it. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like, you know, what I recently suffered was a stroke about seven weeks ago. And then everybody, of course, you know, everybody's a, the concern, I guess. I mean, they're like, take it easy. Don't go so heavy. Don't push. But. You know me, man. I'm, I'm gonna once I get it and I feel it and I feel my old self. I'm gonna push. I'm not gonna hold back. I'm not gonna live in fear. That's just I don't have that vocabulary. Even my wife was concerned. I'm like, don't worry, I got this. I know my body. You know what I'm saying? I know when I could push. The first week or two, I took it slightly easy. See how I felt after started hitting week three. That's when I started to turn up the heat again. Like, uh, uh, it's time to go. Go time. And most people give up after stuff like that. Like they're like, oh, life's short. I don't want to take it as serious anymore. And then they, their, their health dwindles faster because they stop taking it serious because they, they get this like epiphany and they're like, oh, I don't need to take it as serious because it didn't work this time. And then they just like, they go downhill. Yeah. And a lot of people wanted to blame my stroke on, on the fitness. Like, are you going too hard? You need, you need to slow down. Like, listen, man, you, none of you guys are doctors. It's, it's. High blood pressure in my family and my dad's side is hereditary. Something that I inherited. Not that I asked for it. I inherited it. It's something I have to deal with. I mm -hmm. got my medication on now. I'm monitoring my blood pressure. I'm on point. I mean, it's just one of those things I got, I got chin checked, you know, and it's just another story 
that's part of my journey that I could talk about. That I could help others. You know, like I, my experience can help others because now I know the signs and not tell everybody. If you're overweight, out of shape, you should invest in a blood pressure monitor. Order mine on Amazon. They're not that expensive. And check your blood pressure because I was fortunate. My stroke, it knocked me down, but it knocked me out. A lot of people, it usually knocks them out. And they're not the same person after that. No, yeah, I agree. I have a blood pressure thing here just because, like, I used to be a bigger person. And I just, I want to make sure my blood pressure is always good. Or, like, when I'm at Walmart, I'll just randomly check my blood pressure because I'm just really big on health and fitness overall, especially since I used to be almost 300 pounds. So now I take it so serious. And, like, all I do is eat healthy and I make sure everything I put in my body is clean because I'm trying to make up for the damage I did when I was younger. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit because I like your story. I like your journey. You were 300 pounds. It looks like you used to party like me. I've seen you dancing on a boat like I used to with the bottle in hand, getting getting yeah. twisted, getting faded. So what uh what 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 flipped the switch for you, man? And say, you know what? I'm sick of this. I, I want to like I don't want to be this fat dude no more. This slob, this sloppy ass dude. Because that's what it is. We look at look ourselves in the mirror, and call ourselves out. What was it for you? It was just the way I was treating everybody, man. Because when you don't internally love yourself, you can't love the people around you. You can't love your kids fully. You can't love your relationship fully. You can't love your friends fully because you don't love yourself. And the energy you project is what you bring back to you. And when you're 300 pounds drinking all the time and smoking cigarettes and treating your body like crap, like you, the, 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 the people you attract live life like that too. And those are the people that sit around and talk about people negatively. Those are the people that only drink on the weekends. They don't have any real goals oriented. I was successful in the corporate world, but everybody I surrounded myself with wasn't. I was like the top of the iceberg all by myself as far as money-wise, but I still wasn't happy because everything I surrounded myself with was just so toxic because most people that live life like that aren't very good people. And one day I just like, I'm not, I was like, I'm not happy, man. And I just, I'm like, I'm never drinking again because it causes re- issues in my relationships with my kids. It causes relationship with the friends I have. And, uh, I just quit drinking. The, there was an altercation that happened, a physical altercation that made me quit drinking forever. I went to Miami. I was getting ready to go on a cruise. This uh-huh. girl was like screaming at my, at my wife. And I'm like, if you don't, tell your wife to calm down. I'm going to smack you. I was saying that to this girl's husband and he's like, yeah. you're not going to smack nothing. And I smacked him through a brick wall, bro. And like cracked the brick wall and his Whoa. dude had this contusion on his head. Right. And we we're, we go onto the cruise ship the next day and he's, he's on the cruise too. And this cruise ship comes over. They're like, there's a, there's a passenger with internal bleeding. We have to turn around. It's an emergency evacuation. And in my head, I'm thinking it's this dude. I'm thinking he's got like a brain bleed. I think he's like dying. I'm like freaking out. I'm like having all these, like I'm having a panic attack. Thank God I saw him like two hours later and he was fine. But that was like my very final wake up call where I'm like, I am never touching alcohol again. And I just, ever since then, I just decided to be sober. It pretty much like scared you to go sober. Like that that old uh, MTV uh, program, Scared Straight. It scared your ass yeah. straight. Like, oh shit, your, your life... What it was is your life flashed before your eyes, and you're like, I'm going to go to a prison if this dude dies, which you would have. Yeah. You would have went to a prison, and there goes your kids, there goes your wife, there goes your whole life would have been turned up, you know what I'm saying, in a bad way. So, oh, a thousand percent. Over one action, dude. Like one, It wasn't yeah. even like a punch. It was a slap, and then you hit a brick wall. It was just like bite, like real fast. Like It, it might have took like two seconds to do all that, and it could have yeah. ended my whole life. And the crazy thing is, same thing with me, man, like, I had my ups and downs with drinking, partying, and I was probably a lot meaner and moodier towards my wife when I was younger because I was, again, I was a fat boy. You don't feel good. You don't realize that how, how bad you treat people till you look back like, damn, because you don't feel good. You don't feel your best. You're not happy with yourself, but then you're not fucking man enough to call yourself out in a minute like the most of these guys. are like living in denial like, dude, you're not happy. I don't care what you tell me. I don't care. I love myself. Take your shirt off. Walk around in public. Let's see. Let's see how happy you are. How happy are you when you see yourself in the mirror every day? Are you happy? You see you see that warrior or you see a fat slob? But you can't it's so soft. People just don't want especially men, it's crazy. You call them on, they're like little crybabies. They want to report <laughs> you and cancel you and get their little team of cheerleaders. You know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, I'm only telling you the truth. You think I'm lying? Go ask, go ask your people. See if they're honest with you. Your people should tell you, yeah, you do look like shit. You don't look good. You're not healthy. Because at the end of the day, it's not only about aesthetics. If anything, Learn from what happened to me. I got hit with a stroke, and I'm at my top of my game at 49. So imagine those dudes who are not in the top of their game. They're out of shape. That means a heart attack is like knocking at the door soon. It's creeping around the corner. It's got to be. Can't, you, 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 you can't escape that bad internal health forever. It'll catch you. Always does, dude. Like I hate when people are like, well, 
like my blood work is healthy. Like your blood work doesn't oh. show all of it, bro. No, your blood no. work will not, it can't always catch a heart attack. It's not, Nope. it doesn't see the fat around your organs and your heart's working harder. I mean, yeah, I can see yes. cholesterol and I can see certain factors, but it's not the, uh, the, the hundred percent, like I'm healthy because I've seen people with good blood work fall over and die of heart attacks, dude. I've seen it. Yes. Even those, uh, those, uh, what do you call it? Those influencers. The big ones that were all over TikTok. Fat fluencers. The fat fluencers. Fat fluencers. They, yeah, those guys. guys they're all dying like, dude, about... they're dying like, they're dropping like flies right now, bro. There's yeah, like yes. six of them that died in the last year and a half. Yep, yep. And one was crying on TikTok, but like, I'm, I, I'm sorry that I did this to myself and I regret it. I think my brother sent me the video and, and she was just getting deep regret. Gone. Gone. It's too late. She let herself go past. I always say, don't go past that point of no return because there's a past the point of no return. You caught yourself in time. I caught myself in time. I've been as high as, I'm 5'8", so I've been as high as 260 plus. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and unbeknownst to me, I probably already had high blood pressure in my 30s. I didn't check myself in my 30s at all. And I was, used to sweat at the, I'd be out eating with my wife and I'd start sweating while I'm eating, man. That's not healthy. Who sweats when they eat? You know what I'm saying? I would, I would fall asleep everywhere, dog. I'd be waiting for like, let's just say you're, you're waiting for a table yeah. to open up at a restaurant. I'd, I'd sit on the table at that little waiting chair and I'm snoring, sleeping for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I was like, constantly on, tired, dude. And like what I tell people, I always talk about accountability. And the thing is, like I saved myself, dude, but I put my wife through so much heartache back in the day. Like I couldn't, I did all this to save my marriage and it still didn't save it because she had so much resentment towards me from my, from my old, younger self. It's just like, it put yeah. the thing. And the thing that sucks, man, is like when it comes into personal development, when you start to ele elevate so fast and someone else isn't into it, it makes it feel like you're attacking them all the time. And really you're just showing up every day as you, and yeah. it'll push you apart from each other if you're not careful enough with it. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about your adversity. What we're like, you're facing a life right now. Cause you know, said you're going through some stuff and you said, even though you're going through adversity or both of us, we're not going to, uh, Succumb to it. We're not going to just throw the towel and give in. Like, no, we're going to double down and lock in even harder. Talk about that because a lot of people don't know that. Like, they look at you're a coach, I'm a coach, but do these guys really know adversity? Well, they're about to find out. If uh, if anybody else was in my shoes right now, they probably would have lost their sobriety. They probably would have lost their mind, and they probably would have went crazy. Uh, and I'm going to talk about some of it. Some of it's like the story that my wife has to be able to be able to tell whenever she wants to tell. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty course. much we agreed that we've grown apart. And uh, over the last three weeks, like we still live in the same house, but she moved her room down to the basement and we agreed to just be civil for the kids. And throughout this time, anyone that's ever been through a separation knows how hard it is on a man's ego as like your wife leaves. Right. And, uh, Throughout this whole time, like you have, you have all these phases. The first one's denial, then the second one's like begging, and then the third one's like blah 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 blah. There's like five phases, and yeah. it's like almost the fourth week right now, and I'm just now in my acceptance phase where I'm moving forward. But even though I went through all of those phases, I didn't miss my macros, I didn't miss my workouts, I went harder in the gym, and I'm in better shape than I was before all this, and I kept my sobriety. I even in the midst of it all, I did a hundred hour fast and dropped caffeine. Because wow. I have such an addictive personality that I knew if I fell off the bandwagon, I would never be able to fix my life again. So instead, I went even deeper into personal development. Mm -hmm. I, I, I locked myself in my basement, and the only time I got out of it was to go to the gym. And I did a 100-hour fast, and I did nothing but meditation, prayer, and self-reflection on the last 10 years. And what I came to a realization is like, now that I've had like the spiritual awakening, I've done all these things. Kevin Gates talked about this before too, is I had a lot of ang pent up anger and aggression from being molested as a kid. And okay. I didn't know that I even cared about the situation until I went through all this last month of stuff with myself. And I started picking the brains of other people that in the personal development. And I realized I didn't know how to love someone as deep as I should. And now that I've unlocked all that, like it sucks because obviously I wanted to be able to give it to my wife, but now I know I can give it to the world versus just one person. Yeah. Like if anyone's been watching any of my content, you can notice like I don't really have as much as aggression anymore and I've been trying to tap back into it, but I'm such at a high frequency spirituality wise and of enlightenment that like I can't even get angry to make angry videos right now because that's yeah. how high my frequency is because I finally tapped in to the other side of me. Because I'm really big on the divine feminine and divine masculine energy. And before yeah. when I would have 
relationship issues or issues in life, I would only ask males. I've been asking a lot of females the other side of the equation as I was going through all this, and I actually was finally able to tap into both sides because the world needs the feminine side and the masculine side intertwined yes. together to actually heal like you and your wife do. That type yeah. of energy is needed because the world needs both sides to be able to properly heal. And so many people are only stuck on one side of the fence. So my goal is to be able to tap into just stay in this enlightened phase as long as possible and be able to wake up more people while I'm going through this. Because if I can go through all of this and keep my sobriety, no one else can use an excuse that they can't do this. Yeah. And they can't throw it back in your face. Like, you don't know what it's like, Kyle. You ain't been through this. You're not going through a divorce. You're not going through a breakup. The fuck I do. Yes, Dude, I do. I've been you know through so much stuff in my life. Like I've lost friends. Most of my friends are dead or in prison. Like so much stuff. And dude, like this is probably one of the hardest things. Cause when you've been with someone, that's all, you know, like we got, we got married at 21 and uh, yeah, like now I'm about to be 32. That's all I've known for like most of my adult life. So, and it's the same with her. Cause there's two sides to the story. Right. Like I used to be a really bad person and like, she just couldn't get let go of what I had done in the past, even though we were supposed to move on through it. But that's her journey that she has to find out. Right. And most people would be mad or upset or like at their partner. But like at the end of the day, we have to live a life that we truly love. And if she that's doesn't true. love the life that we live, then there's no point to force it. Like, no, you don't have to hate each other because you can't get along. That's so true. That's very well said. A lot of people, they're at each other's throats. It's like, why? Don't take it personal. It just didn't work out. You, 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 like you said, you outgrew each other. My wife went through yeah. a similar situation with her ex-husband. Got married very young. That kids very young, and then eventually, it just, it just wasn't compatible. She realized you, 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 you don't, you don't know much in your twenties. Once you start hitting your thirties, you, you start waking up more. You know, you start getting more wise as you get older. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm quite a bit older than you. So I've been through probably a little bit more than you have in life, but. uh that's why I tell you, like, what you're facing right now, man, it's, all, it's a good test in your life because you're not, you're not breaking. You're only getting stronger. You, you built a, a good, like, it's a shitty test to go through, but you built a good mentally strong mindset because you're not, cr you're not cracking. You're not crumbling. You're not giving in. You're not feeling sorry for yourself. You're not going through the drive through and stuffing your face or drinking again because, like you said, I'm extreme too, and it's hard. Once you go backwards to that other life, it's super hard to come back to this life. So we, we're both the same way. Like, I don't want to go back to that ever again. It scares me. It scares me too, man. And like when it first happened, I was nervous because like I used to be such a self-sabotaging person because like, but this is the first time I've ever been able to make it through something so traumatic and just come out the other side even better. And so, yeah, I, I was, I was just ready for it, man. Like I've been preparing like my whole life for like the last year for something like this. And I'm really, I know not everyone's religious. So if you believe in the universe or God or whatever, as yeah. I was praying to God, like the last month before all this happened, like, I want to know if I'm on the right path in life. And yeah. like, as I was praying and meditating, and doing all these things, like all these things that I thought I loved and cherished was going to be in my life forever, just kept getting ripped from me. And yeah. most people would lose their faith, but Sometimes it looks like an obstacle got put in your face, but it's really just God clearing the path. And like, maybe this relationship was going to be what held me back from healing more of the world. And this is what had to happen before I finally made the next breakthrough. Because my business is already doing really well, but there's been times we fought a lot because she's not a hustler like me. She's a good person, yeah, but yeah, yeah. not everyone's built for this lifestyle, right? No. And uh, maybe that was what I needed to make this next pivotal move. And uh, I've talked to a lot of my mentors and they were like, dude, like, my first divorce was the best thing that ever happened to me. And that's like what really built my brand after that. And I think a lot of people look at divorces and breakups as failures, but really it's not a failure. It's a learning lesson. You learn from it. You grow from it. You evolve. That's just how it is. It, you, that's life. Yeah. There's no, you can't find the perfect plan of life. No one has a perfect plan. It's not a perfect road. You got to figure it out. There's going to be a lot of bumps along the road. And I try to tell people this is also when it goes when I teach them to eat and macros, like, listen, man, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to hit a lot of bumps along the way. You're going to get thrown off track. You're going to get tempted. It's just a matter of the, when, when that happens, you get derailed. Get back on course. That's it. Just get back on course. You can always get back on course. It's, it's the people who stay off course and then stay there and get stuck, and they overthink and never go back to the, the right course. You know that what I'm trying to say is, like, stay on that path, man. Don't derail too much. Dude, change? I fail every day. Like, there's, I'll be in traffic. I'm like, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. And then I come back to reality. Like, I need to just calm down. It's not that serious. Like, he didn't yeah. probably even cut me off on purpose. Like, just chill out. Go to the gym. And uh, 
a lot of us do that. Like a lot of us lose our temper throughout the day, but like the the point of the big picture is you didn't do anything crazy and you just keep moving. Same with diet. Like, okay, you might've messed up today. Just keep moving forward tomorrow. Don't overreact and try to overcourse correct it. And then binge eat two days later, just go back on track the following day. Easy. Perfect. That's a good answer because I said the same thing. Just listen, you slipped. I'm working with a friend of mine. He's 46. He's doing great. He's ripped everything. He had like pizza a week ago. He's feeling all like guilty because was it really his cheat days? And I said, listen, enjoy it, bro. Don't worry about it. Just go back to macros. Don't trip. Then he showed me a picture of himself on the weekend. He looked leaner. I said, see, don't panic, bro. Sometimes your body needs a little refuel and go back to your macros, go back to, go back to your plan, and you're good. But enjoy it in the moment. It is what it is. It's not going to be perfect. This is, we're not saying our plans are perfect. You're going to have bumps in the road. And the main thing is when, when you hit that, get back on point. You know what to do. That's it. This is a marathon, man. This is a, a long Longevity, sustainability that we're teaching, not fly by night. I'm going to get you lean in three months. Okay, cool. Can you sustain that, though? Because a lot of people, I've seen so many people get lean and ripped for summer events, pool parties, you name it. I was in that whole party scene, and then a month later, they fall off. They look like absolute shit again. They look like they look like a spoiled bag of milk. That's what I hate the yeah. most about these coaches, bro, is there's a lot of these coaches that always are doing eight-week transformations. Like, why yeah. do you keep getting fat as a coach? Stop doing that. That shows people a really bad body image. Like, yes. they say we say we have give people bad body images because we say if you're fat, you need to lose weight because it's not healthy. But the people that gain weight and lose weight and gain weight and lose weight and gain weight and lose weight and show that to their clients, like, there was a girl I commented on her video not too long ago. Like her belly was big, bro. And she was like yeah. bending over and she's like, this is what a healthy bulk looks like. Like, no, it's not. That is not what a healthy bulk looks like. Like you're just saying that because you went too far and you wanted an excuse because you have a big following and you're teaching people how to have eating disorders. And that's crazy because we get attacked on a day-to-day -day basis just by telling them the reality of the situation and they get praised because they fell off the wagon and now they're using it as an excuse to have balance and reality their body does not like that. Your body does not like you gaining that much weight than losing it than gaining it. Like no. there's a yo, yo there's dieting. a safe way to bulk and it's very minimal calories. That's it. If you're at let's say two thousand calories, go up to twenty two hundred. Don't you have to go That's up twenty five hundred, three thousand. That's your your trip and you're lying to yourself. You know what's funny is me and my wife always say like, "What's up with the trainers of today? None of them are fit. A lot of them are overweight. They don't look the part." Like yo, I, I don't call them out or nothing, but like yo, you're not looking like what you're supposed to look like. How are you leading any by example if you look like that, like a busted can of biscuits? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I honestly think some people like that, though, because it's not intimidating. When you come to a really jacked trainer, they're scared to hit them up, so they'd rather just hire the fat one. And it's an excuse on the other people's end, too, because they're like, well, my trainer's fat, so I can get away with more. Yes, yes. They feel like they got a hall pass. You're right. Yep. I feel the same way. Like, damn, do I intimidate people? I try to come off easy going. I don't know if the ink scares people. I'm not a bully of any sort, but I'll call people out. You know what I'm saying? What they're supposed to. Like, how, how am I way older than you? 49, you're probably two decades younger than me, and you look like that, and I look like this. What, what's the excuse? You got, you got me on youth. You should be looking way better than me. I'm just saying, because I'll tell you why. Their mindset is weak. Mine's just stronger. I've been through a lot of adversity in life. I kind of learned the game, and I've been tested, and I, I made a decision. Like my client says, decide, commit, execute. And once I decided to learn macros, I committed, and I executed. I said, I'm going I'm to I'm hone this in, and my body transformed. I always had muscle, but I never got as, as lean as – as I have by learning macros, the best I've ever been in my life. It took me this long, though, this whole day to get it. You know, I didn't know the game before. Macros are the best thing on the planet. Like, I, it's crazy, dude, because, like, I was into fitness for a long time before I even knew what macros was because no one ever used to talk about it. Like, yep. you would read these bodybuilding books, and all they would say is, like, a diet, and those people weren't even really following that diet. Like, it was just a cookie-cutter diet they put in there, and it was, like, so unsustainable. It was unreal, and it never even really told you what the calories were, the proteins were, nothing. It was just, like, eat this, 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 and this. This is how this bodybuilder does it. And most of the time, it was way too many calories because they're so pumped full of steroids that all you're going to do is get fat by eating all that. Yeah, and the crazy shit. Like I come a, from the I come two from cups the of rice every two hours. Like that's way too much food. Yeah, I know they're tripping, dude. I did that stupid ass bulk too back in the days. That yeah. comes from the '80s and '90s. I remember yeah. a bodybuilder dude. Just just eat uh eat McDonald's. Eat, eat. every time you McDonald's, order twenty piece of nuggets for protein. If you go to uh, uh, get a burrito, order extra steak and this and this and that, and then and then you cut it out. Okay, then you go high protein, low carb. Easier said than done, man. That's hella hard to do on the body. High protein, low carb, especially when you're not used to it. And then when you you're used to eating those junk foods, when you try to do the low carb, high protein, like you, it's so hard to sustain because you're so used to eating the other food. That's so true. And now though, it's a balance. Now you know. Now you got the tracking app. 
Now you got to scale. You just got to put in the work and the effort. And everybody, I feel like this. A friend of mine says it best. He goes, why is that everybody nowadays, when it comes to sports, they know who their flavor player is, their number. They know who their stats are. They know what team's going to go to the Super Bowl. They know what team's going to be the basketball champion. Who's going to win the win. They know all the stats. But you can't learn the stats on yourself. You can't take the time to learn about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're so MVP, MVP. Who's going to be the MVP? You should be the MVP, fool. You know what I'm saying? You think that player cares about you? No, he doesn't even know I who the fuck the you are. I same thing, dude. It's crazy to me. They will wear another grown man's name on their back. Yeah. But they're not even proud of their own name. It's exactly. wild. No, none. They don't want to take the time. Oh, it's too hard. But, but on a football Sunday, it's not hard when you got to go to the store, buy your 12, 24 pack, go get all the carne asada, go get all the chips, go get everything. You're doing all this extra effort to have these football parties, but you can't hone in and learn about yourself. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It really ain't that hard. I think people think like it's like we're selling fucking magic potion or something like it's bullshit. Like, no, it's not. You just got to learn the formula. The way I tell people is this. Listen, man, think of your body as a company, okay? Think of you making money for your company. You, can, you only have so much money each day you can spend on your company. But every day you spend money on your company, on your body, you must bring me back protein. But in money, in layman's term, money, return on investment. Return on investment is protein. You must learn that way. That's, that's what you're allocated. And then people, I'm trying to make it easy for them. Like, it's just a numbers game, dude. Everything in life's a number. Your birthday, your Social Security, your address. Everything's a number. Your license plate, your, your registration, everything. Same thing with your body. It's a numbers game. But people, for some reason, it goes over their head. And the thing is, people think it's so hard or it's going to, like, change their life. But, like, dude, I live life just like everyone else. Like, I have fun. I go out. I travel. You guys watch me on Instagram. I'm constantly somewhere. I was just in Texas. Before that, I was in California. Before that, I was in Boston. Before that, I was yeah. traveling again. Like, and I always still hit my macros. Like, it does, yep. like, it doesn't affect your life if you don't let it. Like, you can get things at gas stations that fit your macros. You can get things at yes. restaurants fast food places like obviously you want to get cleaner foods just because you can get more volume but if you have to fit those things in it's very easy to travel and still hit your macros it's easy to take your kids to the fair and still hit your macros it's easy to take your kids to the park for the day and still hit your macros like it is not any extra work on your life once you get used to it it no. might be easier because it takes out all the excess thinking of all the other foods you want to waste your time on yeah Funny you say that, though. You mentioned fast food, and people don't realize there's hacks. Me and my wife have done that. We've done videos to my look. If you're here, you can order this. If you're there, you can order this. Is it, there's, you know what I'm saying? They have, they have calories of, as, of what their yeah. food is. Keep it simple. Order you a, a double quarter pound of cheese, and there you go. You got the macros for that. You want extra protein? Order you some nuggets. Just track that. Are you going to eat that every day? No, but when you're on the go or you're out of town, you just make it work. You know? 100%. Okay, I'm, I'm at breakfast. Order five eggs and a side of... Uh, bacon and, and, and maybe a side of hash and you get to eyeball things, you get to learn. Is it going to be perfect? No, but you kind of know you have an idea, you know, and you overestimate. That's how you do mm -hmm. it. You always tell people overestimate, don't underestimate, overestimate. So you have an idea where you're at and pack things. Don't be lazy. Pack things, pack bars, pack some powder, pack some things you can make on the go real fast. It's easy to don't want to shake a cup, shake it up with some ice, boom, with some water. There you go. You got drinks. You know what I mean? Like people just, it's excuses, man. They don't want to work for it. You know, I tell people where there's a will, there's a way, dude. You know, like I'm saying, Humanity has made it this far to 2024. The reason humans are alive, we fought through adversity, bro, through dark times. If people went back a thousand, two thousand years, they think life's hard now. Go back to that era, man. When it, go back to the Genghis Khan era where he was wiping everybody out, civilizations, because he wanted to be the ruler of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, people For don't know sure. adversity, bro. Dude, it's just like so many people are so caught up in like the science of things nowadays. They try to overcomplicate it, or they'll be like, well, like, I got to get protein every four to five hours. Like, dude. Nope. Okay, that's fine. But if you can't sustain it, then don't do it. Like, just eat once a day. Eat twice a day. Eat six times a day. What works for you and where can you get the results in? Like, stop overcomplicating everything. Because back in the day, just like you said, there was no time crunch when you could eat. You ate when you ate and you worked out. And you they were in better shape than 95% of the population now because they moved more and ate less. Yeah. Look I at all the saw... statues that are men of muscles that had no weight systems or nothing. Like those people existed back then too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always like, I love those old school movies like with the, uh, the what is those, those people called? Sparta, the Spartans, man. How they were such a small army. I read a little oh, yeah. bit about them. I, wish, I want to learn more, but they were such a small army, but they were a force. The way they trained back then, the way they kept their bodies, like they're ready for battle. And I tell people, listen, the reason you need a strong fucking body 
if they release something onto society, I don't want to say the word, the CVID or something worse than that, are you ready for battle? Is your body ready for battle? Mine, twice I've already had, past flying colors, you know what I'm saying? I was ready, stroke, you know, survived, I'm here, I'm walking, talking, using all my limbs. So again, I tell people, are you ready for battle when it comes? If there's, let's just say there's an internal war in this country, like something pops off, I don't know, they keep talking about invasion, this invasion, are you ready for battle? Are you ready to step up front in the forefront and defend your family? I don't think people realize that they're too comfortable, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's this book, and it talks about like strong men create weak times, weak times create strong men, and it was wrote like written like 15 years ago, right? And it's literally predicting. It was saying that one of the, this time was coming, and it's literally now. Like we have gotten so weak as a society because there was no time of war, there was no time of really any struggle. Interest rates are at an all time low. People were making more money than ever. Inflation was down. And then it all bursts. And now yeah. everyone, all the weak people are starting. It's actually, I feel like the tides are actually starting to turn. Like there's more people stepping up like us now and there's less people fighting against it. And they're trying to kind of like, they hated on Andrew Tate so much now, but he forced through that resistance so high. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants now. And there's yeah. more people that just keep pushing past that resistance to the point they just have constant support because people realize we need those men back in society because those are the men that are going to protect people when all these half girl, half guy, whatever you want to call them, PK yep. people yep. hide in their houses if anything yes. ever happens. And we're yeah. at tension with a bunch of countries right now, dude. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a scary time you because... Being offended doesn't save your life from war, from a heart attack, from a health scare. If you're offended by those words, that heart attack don't care when it comes knocking. And no. that... That war doesn't care when it comes knocking on your home door. Like, no. it's there. You're either going to fight or you're going to die. Those are the only two options. That's it. That's what I said. You're ready for battle. You never know. We're just too comfortable. And it's some scary times because of uh, with the mandates, what happened in the military, where everybody was getting forced to take that vitamin D shot. You know, a lot of them got pissed. And a lot of future military men got pissed. I was like, nope, we're not joining. So now, rumor has it on the street that they're letting a lot of... Uh, immigrants in to try to like alter the law to allow them to go serve in the military i'm like nah that's dangerous you shouldn't do that because there's something about being an american and serving for your country the loyalty you have this country versus someone coming from overseas and just hopping on our military for a citizenship you know what i'm saying it's not it ain't the i same. agree it's not because most people in america do it for pride and those people are just yes. doing it as a job so if like something yeah. crazy happened they would just bounce yeah they're exactly be a Joe Rogan. He said that on his podcast, by the way. Yeah. One of my favorite, if not me, I agree. actually my favorite podcaster. The cool thing about it, though, is like like when I met immigrants in, like they came here because they, they, they joined because they had been here for so many years and it saved their life that they loved the country yes. so much that they went. Yes. But to come here and then go straight into the military is a very dangerous game to play. Yeah, and super. I couldn't believe it, bro, because like they kicked a lot of people out for not getting the uh, the shot. And yes, now they're sending they out did. mass emails like, hey, we'll bring you back, plus the yes. signing bonus and all these things. And everyone's like, yep. no, we're not coming back. Screw you. Mm -mm. You pissed people off. You pissed off a lot of high uppers. You pissed off a lot of people with that. That's so true. So let's talk about your personal development. What? So you hired uh, Wes Watson, correct? Yeah, he's my business mentor. Okay. What made you uh, So what made you make that move? Like, what Did you see him on social media? Did you just happen to catch his content? Were you watching him, following him for a while? So I've actually known who Wes was since he was posting black and white pictures on Instagram. I found oh, him wow. when I was in a very depressed state in the military. And he was like one of the people that carried me along till I got out and I kept watching him and I just watched his life evolve. And I was in the personal development and I was into fitness and I was into being a fitness business. And uh, I'll tell you a story real quick. I yeah. got canceled on TikTok. I called Lizzo fat and I was scared to lose my corporate job. So I got off TikTok and I shut down my, uh, my personal training business, I went back into the corporate world because I was making $100,000 a year and I didn't want to lose yeah. my job. Yeah. So fast forward, I get back into personal development. I lose like 80 pounds and I'm like, I want to start my business back up. So I messaged Wes. He's like, it's X amount a month for uh, X amount a month. It's $12,500 for six months. And I had a bunch of money saved up in my savings. I had just spent $20,000. I put down cash on my wife's car. I gave Wes 12 grand. I went to a Boston sit down for $10,000. So I blew like 50 grand. And as I did that, I turned in my resignation for my job and I just went all in on this new life. And most people wow. probably thought I was crazy, 
but now I make enough money to sit at home to hang out with my kids. And all I do is personal development and save other lives. I help. My motto is making men and veterans strong again through destroying their vices and excuses. And that's because I was a man with a lot of excuses and I was a veteran with a lot of injuries. And I know how it is to have a bad back, bad knees and not care about life and use that as an excuse to be overweight. And I was the exact same person that my motto is. And I'm just trying to save those men from themselves. That's crazy, man. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of vets don't uh, come out on the other end like you did. A lot of them homeless, drug addicts. Alcoholics. I, I have somebody personally. I don't want to blast him in my family who's struggling with alcohol bad. Like I talked to you about it. It's he's, he's getting help now. He's doing much better. But uh, it's been a fight. It's been a battle, bro. Because it's it's like demons and Ill, illness all at once. You know, and, and uh-huh. PTSD from that war in Iraq. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that came back to and like, mess him up. There's a lot of veterans that haven't even been. Like I never even got deployed, but they all they do is pour liquor and alcohol down your throat every celebration every party all night long yes you'll get drunk till three in the morning go pt at five and then do it again for seven days a week and it's the norm and they teach you that and then you have a week to become a civilian like they teach you like a transition period for a week and then they throw you back to society and nothing makes sense because you're so an aggressive state of mind and you're such an alcoholic because they turned you into it and then they just unleash you back to the world and they expect you to be normal and you don't fit in at your job, you don't fit in with your friends, and you don't fit in with your family. So you're in like this weird transition. And the only thing that yeah. you relate to is drinking. So then you hang out with a bunch of people that drink. And then mo- that's why most veterans end up in that route because that's the only thing they know because that's what they taught us. It's crazy. It almost sounds like coming out of prison, the same thing. Like you you kind of are lost. Yeah. You're you're trying to find yourself. And then you're clean for a while. Then next thing you know, you start hanging out with that crowd again. All it takes is that one bad apple and pulling you back into that lifestyle next before you know it, you're like whoop, right back in you know recidivism like they like it revolving door yeah. you know I, I made sure i made sure before i got out I, I got certified as a trainer while i was incarcerated they actually taught a course so i had like a little game plan while i got out like okay I, at least i got this and i gotta see if they'll hire me with my background because back then it was still shunned upon being a felon nowadays it's so it's almost like celebrate like they like it like they like to hear the stories but back then because they can't discriminate against your background as much no more they'll get sued but back then they discriminate a lot, you know, so it was like, oh, hopefully this cert- certificate is for real. And it actually worked. I got hired with 24 Hour Fitness in Salinas, where I was staying at when I first got out. Eventually, I transferred to, uh, well, I moved to San Jose and got a job up there. And again, they accepted me. And it was like, wow, this is a turning of the tide. You know, I got lucky. I was lucky to, like, have a stepping stone for my life, for my future. Yeah, that's awesome because, like, a- there's a lot of people, like I have friends that went to prison and they literally didn't do anything with their life. And then they come out and then they go back in and they come out and they go back in. And uh, it's just, it's like, they're so comfortable being in, they'd rather be in than out. Dude, it's crazy. I seen that too growing up, especially when I grew up in the streets and the gang culture. A lot of my friends, dudes I grew up with were more in state prison than fed and a lot of them were gang bangers. So a lot of them, they didn't care. It was like fun for them. It was like a badge of honor. And I almost thought I was going to be part of that. It was like, I don't know if you heard the podcast with me and Guerrero. We talk about that. It's almost like you look up to them and like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go get my stripes. I'm going to go to prison. I'm going to get a little swole. I'm going to come out with respect. I'm going to be a baller. I'm going to get the girls. I'm going to get respect from the hood. It's so stupid, that mindset. You know, I, I had a little bit of that mindset. Luckily for me, like bodybuilding and sports and other things always kind of pulled me away. I, I, I like going out and I didn't like to be in the streets. Once I hit 18, I was like getting away from that. Like, nah, I'd rather go to nightclubs and party and concentrating the gym you know i always loved the gym i had an addiction because i thought i was gonna be a bodybuilder you know i wanted to be a bodybuilder so i was in the gym two three hours a day just loving it just crushing weights back then as a young guy yeah yeah i just it's crazy to see that there's like and the thing is man like you just never know like some people just they never had a wake-up call like us some people just never get it they just never clicks and it's it sucks to see because like you can't you can't want it for them. And I've tried, dude. And it's like monkeys in a barrel. Like they'll just yeah. pull you back down into the barrel, man. You'll never escape. Yeah. My, my client calls it crabs in a bucket, throw you a yep. line, but then they don't grab that line. They just stay in that bucket. They stay in that comfort zone. And it's like, yep. I'm trying to help you out, man. I'm throwing you a line, but you don't want it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's like leading a horse to water. I can't make you drink the water. I can show you everything. I can show you the tools. Like you said, I can lay it all out for you. I can lay out the blueprint, but you got to want to do it. You got to execute. You got to put in the work. And it just it adds so much extra stress to your life trying to save those people, man. I had a best friend that I, I detoxed in my basement and because he was on heroin really bad. And I 
Wow. Thought I was saving his life. And all it did was like ruin mine for like two weeks because it was the most stressful thing in my life, bro. I finally got him like clean after like four days. And then like he just like he like acted like I was this bad person because I saved his life. And he's like so resentful towards me for like making him get clean. And like it just went the opposite way. And now we don't talk at all. We still talked when he was on drugs. He would call me and like check on me and I would like check on him. But like after that, like we haven't talked since crazy man these guys don't get it it's like they don't want to be saved it's like dude like i feel they like don't. today's today is like and i said this before i said this on on instagram is like why are we such in a hurry to get to the grave why are you drinking so much it, you know what i'm saying like why are you eating all that bad food why are you doing that to why are you in a hurry to get to the grave or it's like the saying like you said fathers i'll die for my kids i'll die for my family why don't you live for your family why don't you want to live why don't you want to represent bro. Yeah, why do you want to die? Die for what? Why do you want to be such in a hurry to the grave? I don't get it. This era is crazy. Like, I that's such a stupid ass phrase I hear all the time. They're like, I would die for my kids. Like, bro, you don't yeah. even you won't even die it for them. I know you won't die for them. Exactly. Come on, dude. Like, we see how you act in real life. Come on. God, everybody's so fake, man. Everybody's a front. It's so of frustrating to see. Yeah. Like. And like, then you know these guys in per person, and they put that kind of stuff on social media. Like, bro, I know you in real life. Like, yeah. And that's a, that's the thing too about like uh, me. I came out of like I was in another industry, and I said, you know what? I think my calling is coaching again because I was a personal trainer. I just got to find my way with it and, and structure my, my my stuff correctly. But uh, how you how you enjoying coaching? How you like personal development coaching? How's it working for you? I honestly think it's probably the best decision I ever made. I really feel like this is my true calling in life. And like, not only cause like I like helping people, but like this keeps me on the straight and narrow because if I drop the ball, my clients drop the ball and yeah. I don't want to see them fail because I like being able to make a positive impact on their life. And that's why I still stay so strong over these last couple of weeks because, and like people notice it cause like I put my whole life on there and like it kind of made like my uh it kind of made Kaylin mad she's like you're just like you're trying to like get attention like no i'm putting my whole life on here just like i always have and that will never stop regardless of what your mindset is i will not stop putting my life on here because i know it saved someone else today and that's all i care about i don't care about relationships i can care less if i ever get in another relationship in my life if i know i got one more person sober today or if i just saved one more life or i gave one more father back to their kids and i gave him 10 more years on his life that's all i care about at the end of the day and this is what i'll do until the day i die even if I went dead broke and stopped making money from this, I would still get on the internet and try to save lives. Yeah, it's a good feeling. I was just talking to a friend of mine about that. Like, you realize, man, how much we used to party. He was into alcohol, mm -hmm. cocaine, real bad vice. Me, alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol's never been my vice, but once I have two drinks or more, I go all the way in. Me, I was always been a pill popper, ecstasy, MDMA. Eventually, had a Xanax addiction, and uh, now living a straight, narrow, clean life is like, man, I regained some years. I might have killed a little few years back then of my life, but now I regained some. I put a pin in it, at least. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm not in a hurry to get to the grave. I'm, I'm like, put the brakes on. Like, uh-uh, I'm going to fight to live now. Every day I tell myself, now I'm fighting to live. The thing is, dude, if you only live 10 more years, but you lived 10 more years of purpose, it's way better than living 40 years of misery, pain, living into a, a fucking nursing home and hating your life, dude. Like, yeah. like one thing that is going on with my dad right now, and it sucks to see is like he's got he's going through chemo and all this stuff. And when it, he said he didn't want to do chemo and they said that he was going to die within six months, he's lived like three years, but he hasn't yeah. really lived. He hasn't really lived. They just extended his life. And that's not living. And that's how he had no choice because cancer got to him. But that's yeah. how most people choose to live their life by their choices. They're just maintaining a life and getting through day by day. And they're not living. I would rather live life like this for 20 more years than 50 more years mediocre and not having a purpose and drinking and smoking and like negativity and talking about others in a negative manner and having yeah. that that. Like a lot of people in this area, they have that, oh, did you see what so-and-so said? Like there's more people in this town that care about what's happening with my marriage than I care about what's happening with my Damn. marriage. And it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Because they'll be like, dude, what happened? Like, I don't care, bro. It's not your concern. Like, no, it's I not. told a few people and now everyone's like, dude, did you hear this? Did you hear that? Like, I don't care. Like my life is moving forward. I don't, I've never in my life, like what's going on with your relationship over there? Cause I don't care because I know what I'm doing in my life and I don't care what they're doing with theirs over there. 
That just goes to show how miserable they are. They're not even happy with themselves. So they want something to talk 100%. about. We call, in Spanish, we call that cheese mozos. They just blah, 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 run their mouth too yeah. much. You know what I'm saying? Busy bodies. But and man, that's most you know? of society, dude. That's most of society. They're so worried about that. Like, dude, there is literally no such thing as embarrassment. That is your perspective. Like, People are like, oh, that video is cringe, yeah. or that's embarrassing that you do that, or it's crazy that you put that on the internet. Like, embarrassment doesn't exist. It might exist in your head because you're self conscious, but it's not a real thing. Yep. It's something you make yes. up. Exactly. Bingo. It's all in their head. But, uh, man, dude, 100%. it's been great talking to you, brother. This is our first uh, podcast together. We've already done a live and more to come. And you're my second guest officially on my show. This was fun, you know, so. Let's keep it moving, man. We have to schedule another one in the near future, and uh, we got lots to talk about. We can go on forever. Oh, yeah. The last thing I just want to say is, like, don't be scared to reach out to people. Me and Mike met each other on a comment section in Wes's comments, and then a yep. couple months later, I was in California kicking it with him at a burrito spot. And yeah. uh, that's how you change your life. You just take risk, and that's what my whole motto is always about, and just, just take risk and enjoy your life and actually go out with a purpose. And meet people, exactly. Meet good people who are on the same sure. vibe, the same frequency. The universe brought same us together. Way, okay, my brother. Yes, I will sir. talk to you soon. And uh, thank you for hopping on. And uh, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>